Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the RPG Podcast. This is episode number 55. Uh, I'm Ramon Mew. I'm ready to bring you the latest little RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews. And this week on the podcast, we'll be talking about Rooting Gate Online, The Jade Lord. That's uh, book three in that series. Then Plague in the Greenwood, a little RPG novel. After that, Reborn as a Dungeon Core. After that, it'll be Euphoria Online, a little RPG virtual fantasy adventure. Emphasis on the fantasy. Uh, then Into the Black, a sci-fi lit RPG story, book two, Chosen Ring. After that, it'll be Reboot, an epic lit RPG afterlife online, book one. So there you go. Those are the novels that I'll be reviewing this week. Uh, now I'm going to move on to lit RPG news. <laughs> In Little RPG News, we begin with the story of Luke Chimilenko. He's revealed the cover art for his upcoming novel, Ascend Online Legacy of the Fallen. And it looks pretty nice, actually. Uh, his photos got, his cover has gotten a lot more realistic. Um, yeah, several characters, lightning, uh, panther there. Um, looks, looks all very cool. Although, the because of the way the characters are positioned, it kind of looks like that panther is wielding a tail with his knife. So, I just thought that was neat and cool. Okay, uh, looking forward to reading that one when it comes out. Now, next in the RPG news, we have The Quest. Magic Dome Book has put out the first three chapters of this new series, or new, new novel, I should say, from Vasily Mahinko. This is his Dark Paladin series, book two, uh, entitled The Quest again. Uh, you can read the first three chapters on Magic Dome Books. The folks who do the translation work from um, Russian into English and get it published here uh, in, in other parts of the country. Um, I'll look in the show notes for you to look at and read those chapters okay uh next uh lit world uh, just as magic dome books translates the stuff for vasily Henko and a bunch of other russian authors lit world uh does the translation work for the Feyrol series so there you go and the folks over at lit world are holding a contest to promote that series uh the contest will be open until june the 20th uh first place uh winner will receive a real axe modeled after the northern warrior Warriors from the third book with a personal engraving of Pharaoh's hero. Uh, mind you, this book is not out, I believe, yet. So it might mean more afterwards. Um, but um, it is a real live object. It is an axe. Um, it also have a personal uh, engraving of Pharaoh's hero made by real blacksmiths, especially for the contest. In addition, the first uh, place winner will receive an electronic version of the third book. Uh, the second place winner is going to get a souvenir axe. I guess not as custom, um, an intri- an attribution in the book and an electronic part. So they're going to get a, a an ebook as well. These are the contest rules from the Little RPG world. Uh, the third place winner will also get a reward with a poster of the author's artwork of Feral and the author's signature, plus the latest book in the series. Uh, to take place, uh, to, to take part in the contest, I should say, um, there are two things that the company is asking you to do. Uh, one, write a short review about Feral. Um, any of the books, basically, and send them a copy of it. We'll have uh, the email address they want you to use in our show notes if you want to look it up, or you can check it out there on their uh, Facebook page. Um, additionally, they also want you to like their page and share the information about the contest with your friends. Uh, so those are some very interesting stipulations. This is a promotional contest. Um, I'm not sure I feel about kind of setting the contest rules as putting in reviews, um, but it's their contest. And again, this is a real prize and it is a little RPG news article. So you guys do with it as you will. Um, I'll have a link in the show notes for, you know, a copy of all these rules and the link to the, their Facebook, um, page. So you can read it for yourself. If you have any confusion or questions about it, you can send it to them. Okay. Uh, next story. Oh, Alaron Kong chaos seed series. Um, even though the audiobook release for that second book in that series has been pushed back due to technical issues. Um, there's apparently a list on Goodreads for the best audiobooks ever, and our very own Alaron Kong and the first book in the Kansas City series has gotten up to fourth place as of this recording. Uh, so if you want to help Alaron get higher in the rankings um, or vote for someone else entirely, up to you. Um, we'll have a link in the show notes for you to click on, or you can just go to Goodreads and look for, I believe the actual title is... Best audiobooks ever. So you can look for it yourself if you want to, or click on the link we have. Okay, uh, and last but not least, uh, Adventures on Terra. Book two, Escape, is out now. That's the story that I wrote. 
I know. Um, I read Adventures in Terror book one in December. It's been like six months. So I got this one out a lot long, uh, earlier, a lot took less time. The first book took me like a year to write. This one took like six months. Um, I'm super happy that it's, it's done and it's out in the world. People seem to like it. Um, I'm hoping it does as well or better as the first book. But if anybody reads it, hey, let me know. Let me go through some reviews on Amazon if you, uh, no matter what you thought of it. It helps me out as an indie author, helps other people find it and read it and love it like I do and hopefully you do as well. Um, additionally, uh, to celebrate this new release, I've dropped the price on book one to $2.99, which is like the minimum um, and that I need, I can drop a two without like losing a majority of the royalties from book one, according to Amazon rules. So there you go. Uh, but they're also both on Kindle Unlimited. So even if you haven't, you know, don't have the two dollars and then I intend you can look at it there. Um, but I just want people to love these stories as much as I do. So there you go, folks. That's my little bit about my story. Uh, okay. Uh, there are no new audiobooks out this week in the little RPG genre, unfortunately. Uh, we're hoping for, you know, the land two, uh, audio narrative by Padel, but it got delayed. So there you go. Uh, now, there are a few other stories that came out this week that I just didn't have a chance to. I got sick earlier, which cut down my reading days, and I had to do a bunch of editing and preparation work for my own book release. So I'm sorry, guys, who came out this week, but I couldn't review. Um, this includes Restoration, Rise of the Resurgence, which is uh, book two, which would have come out just today or you know on Friday, depending on when you watch this podcast or listen to it. Um, also, um, this was actually a real surprise to me, uh, Raiding Jotunheim, a little bit song of Valhalla Online Book 2. I like the first book a lot, but and this new release can, kind of came out of nowhere. And then I looked on Amazon, like, oh, book three is coming out like next month practically. So I'm like, oh, that's that's a real quick turnaround and almost no, you know, I, I haven't heard anybody talking about it because I think kind of slipped in under the radar and nobody's noticed. Uh, so I'm looking forward to reading it this weekend as well. Um, and uh, last, uh, The Monster Spawn, a little RPG series, Adonis Rebirth 1, haven't read it, um, so I can't say anything much about it, but it came out this week as well, and it says it's a little RPG, but I'll be giving you a, a review next week as well. Okay, uh, in upcoming little RPG, reading off this up, upcoming stuff for June and July, we'll begin with uh, June 17th. Uh, Rules Free VR MMO Life, Volume 3. Um, on the 20th, it'll be Ripcord Online. A Little RPG series, book one. On the 27th of June, it'll be Overpowered, a Little RPG thriller, Kings and Conquest, book one. Um, on the 27th as well, it'll be Forming the Party, uh, Forming the Company, rather, sorry, Alpha World, book two. On the 29th of June, it'll be The Quest, Dark Paladin, book two. On the 30th, it'll be Speedrunner, Tower of Babel, book one. On the 1st of July, it'll be Feral, book three. On the 1st of, of July as well, to be Hero of Not. On the 6th of July, The Curse of the Rion Castle and the Neuro Book 2. On the 11th of July, it'll be Vengeance over Vanheim. I'm probably saying that one wrong. That's the third book in the Valhalla Online series. Also on the 12th of July, it'll be Coding Freedom, Survival, Survive, Week 1. On the 14th of July, it'll be The First Planet, The Space Masters 1. On the 15th of July, it'll be Kingdom Level 3. Then on the 28th of July, it'll be Stratus Online Awakenings. So there you go, folks. Uh, that's June and July. Moving on to uh, new releases and reviews. And in new releases and reviews, we're going to begin with my review of Viridian Gate Online, the Jade Lord, VGO Book 3, written by J.A. Hunter. And this one is uh, 274 pages, $4.99. So it is available on Kindle Unlimited. And now this um, was really a fun, action-filled novel. It took some very interesting turns that were completely unexpected. Uh, and the scale of the story has been knocked down a notch. And, and with the exception of the very beginning of the story, there's really no faction versus faction fine. And we will we'll read, uh, quickly read the author's description since he does a better job of describing the story than I probably do. Um, I'm going to skip down a little bit. Um, though Jack's faction, that's the main character, Grimjack, uh, the Crimson Alliance has a tenuous truce with the tech genius and Imperial Lord Robert Osmark. Jack knows it can't last. Osmark is a devious and power hungry, and it's only a matter of time before he sends his force to wipe Jack and his underdog crew off the map for good. If Jack hopes to survive another month inside VGO, he must find a way to beat Osmark and his army of bloodthirsty thugs and a new quest 
the path of the Jade Lord, may just be the ticket. But his quest will be far harder than anything Jack has ever faced before, pushing into his mental, physical, and moral limits. And if Jack isn't careful, his quest to defeat Osmark and the Empire may end up turning him into the despot he's been fighting against. So that's the author's description of the story. Um, like I said, this is action-packed. This is very much an action-oriented story, but there are some very uh, cool th other things that happen in there. Uh, again, most of the story does focus on what the author described it as the Jade Lord quest. And this is a rare quest line that asks um, Jack and his crew, uh, his small crew of, of friends, uh, to find three artifacts scattered across the world. And if he succeeds, he'll unite the entire Marsh region of the game under the banner of the Crimson Alliance, which means he has more cities, more power, more resources to fight Osmark, if that's what he chooses to do. Um, that's all that stuff is like later in the next book, probably. But gaining those resources and the kind of independence from Osmark and his empire is a big um, reason why the main character goes on this quest line. Now, what I really liked about the story um, is the way that this quest line is set up. It's not just, oh, get these artifacts, you win. Um, it's very much couched as one of the hardest types of quest lines ever with also one of the best rewards. This quest line is so challenging that a single respawn of the main character um, will end it. That quest is done, can't be repeated, you've lost this chance kind of thing. Uh, and the, the author calls this component Death Head. Uh, which is raised the stakes quite nicely in this story because the main character can't die or he loses this one shot to sort of even the playing field. Um, and in the death of quest, again, if the quester dies, he fails, can't repeat the quest. Additionally, this quest has a time limit and um, the main character will, will become progressively weaker as that time is eaten up. So he'll, he'll get a, a number of debuffs that make him less effective in combat, um, smaller, less intelligence, health, stamina, all those good things, less damage. So he'll be get weaker as as the quest progresses as well. So a lot of a lot of things to balance out in the story uh, as far as this quest. So, but it's, it make it kind of gives it a sense of, of a challenge. Like he can't depend on himself because if he just tries to go in head first and bash his way through everything, he's gonna die because he's going against some some powerful entities uh, to get these. Um, rare items in the, in the Jade Lord set. Um, and if he dies, he loses. You know, he can't use that normal um, MMO strategy of just keep going at it. Even if you respawn, you can keep going back later, um, you know, gear up again, train and go back again to try to try get later. He only has one shot at this. So he's really dependent upon his friends to help him out. And, and the crew becomes much more integral in his success in this particular um, book, which is good to me. Because uh, it helps balance things out. Um, now, in addition to the many action scenes, there's a bit of kingdom building. There's crafting, pet raising, um, and even an Ocean's Eleven style house, which I thought was a nice little twist. Um, however, the thing I liked the most about the story was that Groom Jack kind of grew up here by the end of the story. And he's decided the kind of man that he wants to be and how far he's willing to go protect his friends in action. Uh, it's a good story. I had a good time reading it. It gets a score of 7 out of 10. Okay, on to A Plague in the Greenwood, written by Galen Wolf. Okay, uh, this is always a fun series. It is The author is never afraid to try something different. Every single one of the books in this series combines um, a different genre with like this MMORPG stuff. Um, you know, one, it was focused on player versus player. Another one is crafting. Another one is like uh, the Bard's Tale, which is one of my favorites. But it's, um, you know, talking about Bard stuff. Um, and then in the longer books um it there was a um, rum building stuff like kingdom building um, building a town and also larger guild versus guild combat and this is kind of an extension of that but in this one it also adds in the the zombie apocalypse that's right um this book is uh, 319 pages it is two dollars 99 cents it is available on kindle unlimited and now this is the fifth book in the series and it starts again right after the war of the Greenwood, which is book three uh, that's right it goes like one, two, three. You should read four and five, but as far as like the timeline goes, five, three, five comes right after three. <laughs> you can read four in the middle. It's a short story. It's the one with the bard, and it helps explain this one a little bit, but it's not really 100% necessary. Um, now, in The War of the Greenwood, which is this almost an extension of um, the evil city of the horror... Horabians uh, was finally under siege from the allied forces and it looked like it was only a matter of time until their city was destroyed. And it turns out it's not that easy after all. With the help of a goddess, the forces of evil have unleashed the zombie apocalypse upon the Greenwood. Now, Barkud, our level 13 ranger, 
uh, hero ha will have to find the source of the zombie plague before it destroys all of the game world, potentially. So that's my description of the story. Okay, um, now again, this is a mix of little RPG, uh, MMORPG stuff, I guess, and the zombie apocalypse. So there's a balancing act that isn't always maintained perfectly in this story. Like, sometimes it leans very much on the zombie side. Sometimes it leans very much on the MMO side, MMORPG side. Um, so it's it's a sort of a mix back sometimes in the story. But I always appreciate the author's willingness to do something different. So I'm always happy that Galen Wolf writes these kind of stories. Um, it, the story really just try to take the kind of fear inducing survival aspects of a show like the, the Fear of the Walking Dead or The Walking Dead and mixes it in this storyline. And as far as like incorporating those aspects, it does a really good job. Um, there are those moments uh, that you've seen a zombie show where a character tries to do the right thing and save some innocent looking person or a baby and bring them into town, but ends up spreading the zombie plague by accident. Uh, there's also another point where, you know, various towns in the community start to panic and get closed off and like get really murdery because they don't want the zombie apocalypse plague to spread to them. Um, and there's also plenty of moralizing and debating between characters about the smart thing to do with these infected people versus the compassionate thing to do. Um, so there are all those things that, that are kind of tropes of survival horror shows and, and, and novels. Um, so all that is in this story. So if you like that stuff um, and you kind of like it mixed in with an, you know, with this storyline, which you should kind of be familiar with already if you're already into book five, because um, you you can't really read this one as a standalone. Um, then I'm sure you're really going to enjoy this. For me, however, um, it wasn't as appealing. I guess I'm kind of over the zombie apocalypse stuff. I stopped watching like Fear of the Walking Dead and the Walking Dead shows uh, for now. I haven't watched like the latest seasons at all. Um, so for me, it wasn't as entertaining as some of the other novels in the series. But that's me personally. That's, that's, that's those those parts of it that weren't as appealing there is a portion of the story that i thought was highly entertaining at one point the to find the cause of the zombie plague uh the main character and his friends you know the group of heroes that we've talked about or have pulled in from other short stories in, in the series they go looking through a dungeon to find the source of the plague and that dungeon dive is really cool and interesting because there's a, a much larger variety of characters and enemies to fight there um and a lot of the other parts of the novel it's just zombies but in this particular dungeon it's an undead dungeon so there's vampires there's a lich there's um skeletons there's zombie zombies um uh, traps you know the whole shebang um and of course there's a bunch of cool loot as well uh and so that 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 small little nugget there was super cool um but the rest of it was only just let it was okay but it wasn't not bad by any means it just wasn't as appealing as that one little you know dungeon dive section and thankfully uh, according to what the author hints at at the end of the book um, that might be expanded. That dungeon dive stuff might be expanded in book six of the series. So there you go. Um, overall, a fine read. Um, it gets a score of a six out of ten for me. Okay, on to Reborn as a Dungeon, written by uh, myself, not you. That's actually the title of the author. And for that alone, man, you get some good points. Um, just as a clever little thing, the author's name is myself, not you. Okay, uh, this is 100 pages, short story, $2.99. It is not available on Kindle Unlimited. Um, and it has a very unusual villainous start to this story. Um, this is the author's description. It's short enough to read both. Um, a misanthrope receives a message from God. He's been chosen as a candidate for the position of a dungeon core. His qualification, test, kill three entities within 60 seconds. So there you go. That's the author's description. Uh, mine's slightly longer. Uh, a green screen suddenly appears in front of Patrick while he's driving and tells him that he's been chosen as a candidate for the position of a dungeon core. All he has to do is kill three entities within 30 seconds, or sorry, 60 seconds, and himself. Uh, the MC seriously just accepts this, and he, while driving, he mows down into other three other people and kills them without question. Um, and then he poisons himself later in the apartment, and he has spent several days dying, and then he's um, reincarnated or into a dungeon core, a, a crystal in this case. Um, so that's my description of the story. Now, here we go. He's, he's a dungeon core. Um, he can make a dungeon. He can make traps. He can populate it with the uh, monsters. He just has to use soul power, which of course he gets from killing other entities, whether they're, no matter their size, the bigger, the more soul power. Um, however, anything that enters his dungeon will seek him out and destroy him. So there you go. It's kind of the balancing act. His first minion though is an ant. 
Okay. Um, this is besides. There's a really odd ending. Where this guy just seems murderous for almost no reason whatsoever, and it's never explained why he's so willing to be so murdery at the beginning. And then it goes like this. Mo most of the novel is just him as a dungeon core, um, creating minions, ants, insects, um, variety of you know progressively more complicated, more powerful insects, and killing the other insects that come into his dungeon or his maze uh, to get more you know spell power SP and upgrading his dungeon and it's kind of the re repeating cycle of any kind of dungeon master story um one of the unique aspects of this particular story though is its sense of realism um nothing's overpowered it makes sense that a dungeon core would have to start super small with the smallest things in the in, you know in that world in our world insects and start with them instead of like having a you know a goblin or a slime or any kind of mystical creature um, and then from there, the, the dungeon progressively gets more powerful. He starts killing frogs or other slightly larger animals. Um, but by the end of the story, it gets all murdery again. I mean, like, the dungeon core starts murdering people and, like, old ladies that he doesn't know. Um, kids. Like, literally a bus full of kids by the very end. Um, and it's, it's just the beginning and the end are very murdery for almost no apparent reason. It's really hard to like the dungeon core for that purpose. But the middle stuff is rather interesting. And it's it's a very interesting aspect of like design and balancing between like being aggressive and like luring things in it's it's a fine dungeon story in the middle it's just the beginning and it's just super murdery so it's a little weird but hey it's it actually is a little rpg so for me it gets a score of a uh, five out of ten but there you go okay uh next uh euphoria online a little rpg virtual fantasy adventure written by jb reese okay uh by this cover uh, if you just look at the cover, you can tell exactly what kind of novel it is, and it is the kind of novel. Um, I will read you the author's description. Uh, tired of leveling up from the manner of fighting monsters and dull, repetitive grinding, welcome to Euphoria Online in the far future. When technology is advanced to full virtual immersion, a new type of hit sensation MMORPG, Euphoria Online has come to play, which promises all the sensual pleasures one can ever dream of. Gain XP, explicit points, Merely from considering committing some of the hottest acts of debauchery. Uh, and that's, I think, enough to give you an idea of what this story is about. It's 82 pages. It's very short. It is $3.25. It is not available on Kindle Limited. Um, and based on the price point alone, 82 pages for $3.25, not worth it for, you know, to me. But if you like erotic fiction and MMOs, uh, this might appeal to you more. Um, again, while it's listed as Little BG, the author goes out of their way to warn readers at the very beginning before anything happens that there's a ton of sex in this thing. Um, like the first 3% of this novel of like 82 pages is a lot of just warnings about sexual content and, you know, lesbian, straight sex, all that stuff. So the author is giving you a big heads up about it. Um, and without a doubt, this is kind of a, a, a subgenre of little RPG because it is an MMO. There are level progressions. Um, even if they're, you know, minimal cause it's a short story. Um, and I'd say the novel is probably about like 80, 90% sex, rest of it, you know, RPG mechanics, but they do exist in the story. So I, I can't just dismiss it as not being little RPG. Um, and this is definitely not action oriented adventure stuff at all whatsoever. It really is just like late night MMO sex stories. Um, so if that's not for you, the story isn't going to be it cause there's not much else to it. But if that's the kind of stuff you like and that's what you're looking for, this will very much fulfill that need for you. Um, the RPGs parts in the story, while they exist, they're also kind of a parody uh, of, of like uh, MMO stories. Um, for example, it seems like only super high level characters in this, in this game ever find the sex options because all the characters that are involved in like the, you know, the sex stuff like are level like 400 to 600. Um, so I feel like you had to do a huge amount of like level grinding just to get to this portion of it. And at the end game, that's what it's about. So like you pay like all those monthly subscription fees to, to get, you know, to, you know, grind out all those levels and all that experience points and all fight the monsters, whatever the case is. And then at the very end, like they give you, then they give you sex. I'm like, um, seems, seems odd, but like I get it, it's a joke. Um, also, when the main characters do have sex, um, it's it's centered on like, a guy for the most part, except for like the beginning introduction scene. Um, he gets a ton of experience points or ecstasy points, as I think the author describes it as, um, for the acts that he does, and it gets like extra stat bonuses like 
400% stamina for lasting so long. Um, so a lot of like jokes like that in the, in the story as well. Uh, and of course, a bunch of tropes about the different kinds of women he, he beds. Um, so if you're looking for, again, uh, a sex story in an MMO, this is going to appeal to you, I guess. Um, me personally, I, I skipped all the sex stuff. I mean, I'm not kidding. It's a, it's not my kind of thing. But I, I definitely read it and training because it said a little RPG in it, and I had to give it a fair shake. So it wouldn't be fair of me just to not. Um, but I skipped all the sex stuff, and there's a lot. Um, and I got to the MMO stuff and the RPG stuff, which is quite a minimal, but it does qualify um, as a little RPG because, one, it's in a game world. That's obviously stated, and there is a progression of power. The guy gains experience points for doing the things that he does and he gains levels um and stat points so i can't just you know it's what again one of those instances disqualifies it meets my two you know very low bars of low rpg qualifications um and everything else is just it is what it is for me it didn't do anything but you might be different and there's no judgment there but again i gotta laugh at at the combination here uh get a square of about five out of ten okay um next story End of the Black, a sci-fi letter BG story, book two, Chozon Ring. It is written by Stuart Gross. Okay, this is uh, 95 pages, uh, 99 cents, not available in Kindle Limited, so that's actually a really good price point for the short story that it is. Okay, uh, I will read you my description. Uh, Stuart Gross has signed up to play in a sci-fi MMORPG on the most difficult setting. In the game, he's a shapeshifter sci user named Miracon who's on the line for multiple governments, uh, not only because of the peoples he's killed but uh, or the, his illegal genetics, but because of the rogue princess he's transporting. Now he's looking for a few new crew members to round out his team and take on some more challenging quests. Okay, actually not a really, it's, it's really decent premise. Um, I, I liked the first book. It was very entertaining, lots of action-oriented stuff. There was like a small questionable sex scene in it that I could just basically skip and ignore, and, and like almost 90% of it was just action adventure, little RPG stuff, descriptions, and space battles, and it was cool. Um, this book veers more towards the questionable, unfortunately. Um, the first 11% of the novel is a recap of the last short story and like a big info dump about uh, the possible upgrades for the main character's ship, um, and it felt like a little bit of a, a padding as far as story-wise and, and like RPG stuff, because it, it has to look like five or six, seven pages of just options um, for the ship upgrades. And none of them, very few of them, I should say, were ever implemented now. And the main character actually says, I don't plan to implement most of these, but it's nice to know them, which means like, oh, he's just giving us information about possibilities. So it feels a little fillery there, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, but it's not uninteresting information. It's just stuff a lot of people are probably going to skip. Um, again, there's a lot of action in the story. Um, there's an expanded um, understanding of the larger game world and the different types of worlds. It's a space story, so you know, plenty of worlds to explore. And in this particular instance, the the main character travels to uh, a, a planet of, of rogues, basically, you know, mafia, um, mercenaries, slave trading, things like that. Um, and while he's there, um, he decides to get some new crew members. And not necessarily recruit them from like the player base of other MMO players. In this particular instance, and, I, and where it starts to get a little questionable for me, is he decides to buy some sexy slaves um, to, to fill out his crew. He gets one member of the crew who's who's a player, but the rest of the positions are filled by people he purchases. And they're all hot ladies. Who would have thought? Um, and, that, and that in itself is not necessarily question because you know he could free them later or he could free them now whatever the case is um but it's the things the main character chooses to do with those slaves who don't have a choice to say no um that make me that are questionable to me um and some of the other things the main character does uh for for example um after one battle with a gang of thugs who assault him and his crew um instead of defeating the only female character in that in that gang he or and sending her to respawn because she's a player he instead slaps a special slave collar on her that traps her in her mind and then he sends her out um and he sells her off to prostitute herself to make him money yeah and i'm like uh that seems weird and I'm like that that's that's kind of when it started i'm like uh maybe this is not the kind of story that i'm interested in um and it got progressively more questionable um for example the main character later on in the story gets a special upgrade uh, that gives him a big power boost to his side abilities, which is cool. 
Um, but with every big power upgrade, there's usually a consequence. And in this case, it, it is that he, it requires that he have sex like every couple days or he loses all the power and then some, um, which is not, I guess, like the worst trade off. And it's not in itself bad, but how he chooses to fool out is with the slaves. They can't say no. And so it becomes a, a case of, you know, it being rapey because they can't say no. And here's a sign thing. Um, apparently the that ability boost also makes all of his fluids super irresistible and addictive, like a drug. Uh, and so for me, that was kind of the point in which I'm like, okay, I don't think I'm going to read the next novel in this series, but I'll finish it out because that I have to give it to you for Because all that stuff happens fairly early in the story. And again, these questionable parts are a, a, a small part of the story. Something like, I'd say, 10% of it. Um, the other like 90% of it is straight RPG, action, adventure, fighting, all that stuff. Um, and a lot of people can probably overlook it. I just couldn't because whenever you get into non-consensual sex, um, it's just it's just a thing that I'm not interested in reading about. Even if the rest of it's really pretty decent and good, it kind of ruins it as far as like continuing on the series. But if you, I mean, if you're okay with overlooking that or you don't see it the same way I do, that's perfectly cool. Everyone's adults here. Um, read the stuff that you want to read. It's just that I, I'm going to drop the series as far as reviewing it. But um, I, you know, I couldn't give it a like a bad score just based on that alone because it wasn't the predominant theme of the story. But taking into consideration the fact that the author's other series is called um, it's the Rules Free VR MMO Life, which is super dark and there's a lot of sex and rape and graphic torture. I'm like, this seems like a theme of the author's writing. Um, whether he talks about it as like, oh, it's the villain story or not. These aren't things that I generally want to read about in my stories. And that's just a personal decision, which is which is fine. Other people are cool with it or they, you know, they have the things that they're interested in or they can overlook it or they think of it a different way, whatever it is. And, you know, I'm not going to judge them for that. It's just for me, not my thing. So um, I'm going to drop this series. But again, all the other parts of it, RPG mechanics, um, action stuff, space battles, really good. I'd give that portion of it like a 7 out of 10. But... It's the other things that are questionable that kind of drop it down for me and make me drop the series. Um, so I'm going to give it a score of a 6 out of 10 overall, and I won't be re reading any more in the series. So there you go. Okay, on to uh, Reboot, an epic lit RPG, Afterlife Online Book 1, written by Domino Finn. Okay, this one is a 300... 57 pages, $4.99. I'm going to read you the author's description because he does a better job of describing it than I do. Uh, Tad Lonerman is having a crappy day stuck in an office traffic late to a crappy meeting. On the bright side, his game development career is only is the only non-crappy thing that he has going for him, so life isn't all bad. At least until he dies. Now Tad finds himself uploaded to a beta test of Haven, an unannounced, hyper-immersive MMO where the dead have a second chance at life. It's not virtual reality, it's digital reality. A true afterlife online except that Haven isn't exactly a blissful paradise. Tad bumbles into a pagan blood feud, crosses paths with fallen angels, and gets lied to by the saints. His only allies, a frat boy with a penchant for dying and a pixie who won't give him the time of day. Second chances be damned. All Tad wants to do is return to his old life, and he'll do anything for the opportunity, even make a deal with the devil. Okay, uh, again, um, 357 pages, $4.90 available on Kindle Unlimited, well-priced, also on Kindle Unlimited, which is always a plus. Now, the novel actually does a really good job of getting right into the game world. Um, by the 2% mark of the story, the main character's already in that world, he's died, he's gone to Haven, yep, um, and his digital afterlife. Um, I should note that there are some religious undertones in the story, which you're going to get with any, any kind of story that describes part of his premise as an afterlife. It, it's inevitable. We're all influenced by some kind of concept if you're going to think of it that way. And in this particular case, um, the game company is represented by an employee with an avatar named St. Peter that introduces the main character to the, to the closed beta afterlife. The bad guys are goblins, cyclops, orgs, trolls, and other monsters referred to as the pagans. And the real big bad guy and tempter, Lucifer, is a rogue player that just wants to see the game world burn. Um, that's pretty much the extent there, there's a few like name references, um, to it. And then of course, comparisons to heaven, uh, you know, the, the, uh, that kind of afterlife. 
Um, now, the first half of the story is mostly story setup and information about how the game works. Um, heck, the first 10% of it is just character creation and the tutorial for the main character. So be aware that the first half of it is a little bit slow. Um, but at that second, at that 50% mark, it really does pick up. Um, that doesn't mean that the first half is in not interesting in its own way, though. Um, you'll get introduced to all the important characters. You get a feel for the game world, who the bad guys are, who the good, good supposed good girls are. Um, and you'll get an explanation of how the game world works. Um, one of the places the story really does shine is the potential depth of the game mechanics. And the author's background as a real-life game designer really kind of showed through her. Um, there are four basic character classes, artist and mystic warrior and explorer i might be saying them wrong or remembering them incorrectly the specific titles um but and each has their own benefit you know artisans are our crafters um mystics are the spellcasters and they can all specialize later um warrior strength um and the explorer agility you know they agility based um and of course they have corresponding stats that help them out in each one of those 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 particular classes uh, but there's a stunning number of skill choices in this story that really allow lets you see that there are so many um, potential combinations and customization options for, for the players in this game world that it's really nice and in-depth and it's interesting. Um, there's also crafting the story, which I always love. Um, so if you like, if you're kind of a game mechanic nerd like me and you like a bunch of numbers and stats and like seeing the potential opportunities for character growth and the things that you would do, um, if you're playing this game, uh, this is definitely the part that you're gonna like a lot. But anyway, the, the story becomes kind of a real page turner after the 50% point, when the main character is told by Lucifer, the, the big bad guy, um, that the game company has been lying to him the entire time and that they're intentionally not letting him talk to his little brother, who's still alive in the real world. Um, and there are some serious consequences to the main character deciding to hack into the game's servers, um, and it pushes the story up a notch. Uh, from there on in, it's a much faster paced story, tons of combat, big epic battles, um, you know, realm you know, shattering things, apparently. Um, there are plot twists and story revelations galore after that. So it, it's a much faster story after that 50% mark. So if you're, if you're reading the first half and you're thinking, this is slow, when is going to get super exciting? I mean, there is comment in the first half. So don't, don't, don't take, get me wrong. Those, there's, there's smaller combat stories. But there's nothing like it is in the back half of it. Um, there, there are really big epic battles in the back that are probably going to satisfy just about anybody. Um, th there especially some of the God of War fans, Shadow of the Colossus fans. That's all the hint I'm going to give you guys. I don't want to spoil it for you. Um, but there are a lot of game references in the story as well, which I thought was fun and interesting. Um, and the relationship between the characters throughout the entire series, throughout the entire book, I should say, are fun. Sometimes they're a little forced. I mean, you can tell that, but it's, you know, it is what it is. But that doesn't make them any less interesting, uh, to me at least. Um, and I especially liked in the story um, because the author has uh, a background in, um, game development. Um, he there are a lot of inside jokes for programmers, and and game industry people and commentaries on on the game industry itself, which are fun and interesting. I especially like the one about um, there's a, a bug report button that, that the main character has access to. He never uses it. It's like the very end of the story, and when he finally does, you know, puts in his game bug report, thinking that something's going to change or he's going to get the attention of the developers because something bad happens that he has to get their attention for and it does zero help and i i couldn't help but laugh out loud at that because i, I beta tested so many mmos in my life that i'm like oh yeah that that's that's what it is it's you think it's going to help you think you're reporting a bug and you get almost zero response uh, like 99 percent of the time uh, so it feels like you're talking to nobody so there are a lot of like little jokes like that that, that i found particularly kind of humorous and fun um and for me it was a fun read uh had a really good time reading it um, it was a little challenge again towards the first half of the story to stay interested sometimes. It took me a little longer than I thought it would to get through that half. But once I hit that 50% mark, bam, it was a page turner and I finished it in one sitting. Um, so for me, it gets a score of a 7 out of 10. So there you go, folks. That's Reboot, an epic lit RPG. Um, that's it for the show, folks. That was the last one. Um, thank you very much for listening and watching. You remember, you can follow the podcast on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Patreon, all those great places. And if you want to support the podcast in any way, shape, or form, you can find all the ways to do so at the LittleRPGPodcast.com forward slash support. Uh, but for it, for, for me, Ramon Mia, that's it. Thank you for hanging out with me. And again, for letting me talk about this thing that I love and, and coming into my home and, and just listening to me you know, go on and on about these stories that I love so much, so much that I had to write my own. Um, thanks. 
you know, I always love doing it with you folks or I'm talking about Little RPG. That's what I mean. Um, until we can hang out again, though, uh, remember to go read some Little RPG. Goodbye, everybody. Ramon Mejia from the Little RPG Podcast. Uh, just getting this all set up and tested, and please excuse that sound if you heard at the beginning. It is uh, just a technical thing that I'll just edit out later, hopefully. Um, but I got my notes, got my stuff. Nice day. Uh, this is the day after the uh, release of Adventures in Terror Book Two, so I'm a little, I'm still a little tired. Uh, doing all that stuff, you know, marketing, editing, posting things, co- you know, responding to comments. Uh, but I'm going to get through this podcast because you, the viewers and listeners and watchers, you like the show. I, I mean, nobody really makes me do this. I just like to do it. So I guess there's no really reason I couldn't skip if I wanted to, but I don't because I know you guys like it. So there you go. Okay. i uh, going to get this podcast started up in here. Uh, yeah, I know I'm old. Um, this is going to be uh, get ready to go in three, two, one.